Hello and welcome to the third video on getting started with beam reinforcement. In this session, we will delve into the main rebar positioning in different beam shapes. In the configuration, several beam shapes are available, each allowing you to choose rebar specific to them. While most settings are similar across these shapes, there is one key distinction among them, which will be mentioned in this video later. We will use an L-shaped beam to demonstrate the positioning of the main rebars. Main rebars are the longitudinal bars that run along the length of the beam. On the right side of the window, we observe the main rebar options, which consist of several tabs. The Layout tab allows you to define reinforcement settings such as size, quantity, position and couplers if necessary. Under the Bar and tab, you can specify the end shape for each bar. In the Settings tab, you can select common settings such as minimal bar length and other. Within the Layout tab, use the new item button to add as many rows as required. The adjacent buttons can be used to move row up, down or delete it. In the row position settings, you can place the rebar at the top, bottom, center or seat top of the beam section. Note that the seat top option is not available for rectangular beams. Then we choose rebar type, quantity and horizontal position. The position from the left inserts bars from the left side of the beam. If the count is more than one, the bars are distributed from the left side to the right side of the beam with equal distance between them. Option from left by top can be chosen for all bars except the top ones. Rebars are aligned with the beam's topmost bar. This option is typically utilized for L or inverted T-shaped beams. Option from the right is the same as from left, except the first bar of the rebar set will be on the right side of the beam. Rebar position from the center places rebar with a distance from the beam center as defined in the horizontal distance column. The vertical position tab facilitates vertical rebar placement. You have the choice to position rebars either based on cover as specified in the Cover tab or by using stirrups, which are specified in the Stirrup tab. The vertical distance serves as an offset from the stirrup center to the main rebar center, or it can be an additional distance from the cover, as defined in the cover settings. This distance can be either positive or negative. A negative value pushes the bar outside the beam while a positive value moves it inside the beam. In the case of center bars, a positive value elevates the bar, whereas a negative value lowers it. Start and end offsets represent the rebar's displacement from the beginning and end of the beam. These values can be either negative or positive. A negative value indicates an extension beyond the beam, while a positive value offsets the bar from the beam face towards the center of the beam. Coupler at the start or end adds couplers at the beginning or end of the rebar. Ensure the correct family of the coupler is selected. In the bar ends tab, you can choose end shapes for the main rebars. These options appear once you have defined the main rebar layout. Row position and rebar type are derived from the Layout tab, displaying all rebars defined there. For the selected bar, you can specify the bar ending option. When choosing the straight option, this uses the simple start and offsets of the main bars as defined in the Layout tab. A straight bar also allows you to define hooks at its ends. If you need a different shape at the bar ends, you can choose from type 1 or type 2 and specify the parameters to define the shape. Or you can select rebar hooks. Under the side tab, you can define at which end of the beam the selected rebar shape should be applied. Under the settings tab, you can specify common settings for main bars, 
such as minimal bar length, bar visibility states, exclude inserts if there are any at the start or end of the beam. If this option is checked, software will neglect hosted families that have this type parameter, remove family. It is useful if you have cuts as families and you want to ignore them so that reinforcement will go through them. In this step, you can also select a partition for bar sets. In the next session, we will explore stereo positioning. Thank you for watching. Until the next time.